In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Welcome, dear friends, to this Our God Mass for the sixth Sunday of Easter. Paul is away this week. He's gone north on his job. But happily, Giselle and little Cosmo are here supporting us as always. You heard me tell about little Eli had problems with his ears and couldn't fly. Well, uh, Alessandra drove 10 hours to the Swiss-French border and his father drove over the Alps for six hours <laughs> to meet him. And then there was an exchange. It sounds like a spy film, I know. <laughs> but Emma, you're glad to be back yes, and glad to be home. Back. Good, and we've got a very distinguished guest here, oh, no, Kathy. No, no. <laughs> Born in Scotland, family went to West Africa. She went here and there, went to Rhodesia, then left Rhodesia and went to Australia. But she's been a key supporter of the Garden Mass. You remember a couple of years ago, the Mass, all our YouTube films that Alex made were stolen. They all disappeared and we had to start again with one subscriber. Kathy's son Ian works for Google, very nice, which of course owns YouTube, and at her prompting. Lots of. <laughs> Lots of. Will you get on with it, son, she said. So we got all our masses back. So whoever you are, dear friends, whatever you are in the world, you're heartily welcome to this, our Garden Mass. We pause for a moment and ask the Lord to bless us with his mercy. We love you, Lord, because you have heard the cry of our appeal Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You turned your ear to us in the day when we called to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. How gracious are you, Lord and just. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, Peace, peace to, to people, people of good goodwill. will. We, we praise you, you we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King O God, God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Son, Lord God, God Lamb of God, God Son of the Father, Father you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honour of the risen Lord and that what we relive in remembrance we may hold to in what we do through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen, amen. as peter reached the house cornelius went out to meet him knelt at his feet and prostrated himself but peter helped him up Stand up, he said. I am only a man after all. Then Peter addressed them. The truth I have now come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came down, came down on all the listeners. Jewish believers who had accompanied Peter were all astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit should be poured out on the pagans too, since they could hear them speaking strange languages and proclaiming the greatness of God. Peter himself then said, 
Could anyone refuse the water of baptism to these people? Now they have received the Holy Spirit, just as much as we have. He then gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, they begged him to stay on for some days. The word, word of, of the Lord. Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Uh, the response is, the Lord has shown his salvation to the nations. The Lord has, has shown, shown his, his salvation, salvation to the, the nations. nations. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord, Lord has shown, shown his salvation to the nations. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. The Lord, the Lord has, has shown, shown his salvation, salvation to the, the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, ring out your joy. The Lord, the Lord has, has shown his salvation, salvation to the nations. My dear people, let us love one another since love comes from God. And everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only Son, so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to, be God. to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we shall come to him. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants any more, because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have learnt from my Father. You did not choose me, no I chose you and I commissioned you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last and then the Father will give you anything you want to ask in my name. What I command you is to love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, before people go for an interview, they usually spruce themselves up, dust themselves down, and check with their family and friends if they look okay. Minor adjustments are made, ties are adjusted, sometimes changed, brown shoes are changed for black ones. Assurances of not to worry, everything will be fine, are urged. On the way to the interview, the hopefuls might even whisper a telegram to St. Jude, the traditional patron saint of hopeless cases. CVs have already been sent on ahead, advance notice of past accomplishments that are supported by important signatories. The gaps have been covered as well as could truthfully 
be managed. All these reports now lie on the table in the interview room. Dry throats are watered, moist palms are rubbed, nervousness is covered over by a ready smile. <coughs> you hear your name called. You proceed. The interview begins. The agenda is yourself. People go through a lot of anxiety and strain in the hope that they will be selected for the job. The prospect of failure, the prospect of rejection is real, but the strenuous hope of being chosen gives them courage to face this challenge. To be chosen, gosh, that's to be picked out, opted for, preferred, taken on. All this makes the risk of refusal worthwhile. It's only when the applicants are chosen for the job that they are free to take it or leave it. Before acceptance, they are in no position to choose the job that's advertised. In applying, they declare they want the position, but wishes and choices. Only after acceptance have they got the actual power to choose this job for themselves. That's why people forced by circumstance into a course of action always say, but I had no choice in the matter. Real choice presupposes the freedom and the power to commit yourself. When John talks about the love of God in today's readings, he is clear what he means. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us. The same message is underlined in the Gospel. You did not choose me. No, I chose you. We don't have to turn up for an interview to discover if God will choose us or not. God has already made an everlasting decision to love us. God's love is not the issue. It's not a matter of speculation. It's there, eternally. God's love is first. And it's only because of the primacy of God's love that we have the power and the freedom to choose God. God has opted for us, dear friends, taken us on. It's a decisive movement of love that began with the Father. As the Father loved me, so I love you. Remain in my love. Can we remain, can we remain in the love that chooses us? Can we do that? God's love is based on choice. God loves because God chooses to love. The supreme example of that, of course, is in his word, Jesus. If the supreme act of love is to lay down your life for the sake of others, Jesus shows that he could have no greater love. His love made its way with a cross on its back. He gives everything, he empties himself. In everything that he does, Jesus keeps on choosing to love. That's a tough choice. He didn't choose once upon a time. He chooses to love at all times. That love drained him of life on the cross. That's the self-giving quality of love that's so focused on the other, not on yourself. 
A young medical student, now a famous doctor, wrote about how he watched an unusual operation in a London hospital. He wrote, it was the first time that this particular brain operation had been carried out in this country. It was performed by one of the leading surgeons upon a young man of great promise for whom after an accident there seemed to be no remedy. It was an operation of the greatest delicacy in which a small error would have fatal consequences. In the outcome, the operation he wrote was a triumph, but it involved seven hours of intense, uninterrupted concentration on the part of the surgeon. When it was over, a nurse had to take the great surgeon by the hand and lead him from the operating theatre like a little child, like a little child. That kind of self-giving and concentration on the needs of others reflects beautifully something of the quality of God's love. Jesus hopes that we will keep on giving ourselves in love, even when the giving hurts when we feel we have nothing left but our own exhaustion. But it's that kind of love, that kind of love that so beautifully mirrors God's kind of love. Love is the giving of self, its communication, handing over the self. We have to admit that few of us are adept and living that kind of love. But we can choose to try, confident that our struggle is backed, supported by God's energetic love. Somewhere in the struggle, dear friends, if you listen very carefully, you will hear the voice of God cheering you on if you listen very carefully. True love is from God. The Holy Spirit lives not only in us, but in many people who may seem to be outside the community of faith that is the church. We show we are Christians by the generous love we show to one another and to all people, irrespective of race, colour or creed. We pray for the Pope, all clergy and religious, that they proclaim the love of God, which is the heart of the Gospel, and dispel the idea that God is not for all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the leaders of the world and all those in power, that they are courageous enough to lead with humility and to listen to the opinions of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for those who have felt excluded or judged by the church. We ask that they will encounter Christians who express generous love and welcome and lead everyone to the living God. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Thank you, Giselle. Dear friends, I would ask your prayers for a dear priest friend of mine who's in the hospice in Frascati in Italy, Father Len Koffler. With Cardinal Hume, Father Len founded the Institute of St. Anselm in 1984 for the training of formators and leaders. A few years ago, the Institute moved to Rome, which is a lovely place. I've had the privilege of lecturing at St. Anselm's for over 30 years, and I've always been struck by the gentle leadership and the wisdom of Father Len. Please remember him 
in your prayers. Another priest friend, Father George Webster, Redemptorist, has died recently. He spent most of his priestly life working in Zimbabwe for 40 years, where he was recognized as a giant force for good, not least during the 15-year war in the fight for independence, which ended in 1980. Father George worked here in this house of St. Clement's for a chime as he was chaplain to the convent in Medstead before retiring to our house in Clapham in London. So please remember him in your prayers. Let us pray. O Lord our God, from whom neither life nor death can separate those who trust in your love and whose love holds in its embrace your children in this world and in the next. So unite us to yourself that in fellowship with you we may always be united to our loved ones whether here on earth or with you. Give us courage and hope. This we ask through him who died and was buried and raised to life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The love of God flowing free. The
pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the May Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his good, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of, of the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Lee Hunt was poet, essayist, journalist, was a central figure in the Romantic movement in England. Um, he was imprisoned for two years because he criticized the Prince Regent for being a fat Adonis. He was released after two years. He was a friend of Keats and Shelley and he died in 1859. This is his lovely poem, Abu Ben Adam. Abu Ben Adam, may his tribe increase, awoke one night from a deep dream of peace and saw within the moonlight in his room, making it rich and like a lily in blossom, an angel writing in a book of gold. Exceeding peace had made Ben Adam bold, and to the presence in the room he said, What writes thou? The vision raised its head, and with a look made of all sweet accord, answered, The names of those who love the Lord. And is mine one, said Abu. <sighs> Nay, not so, replied the angel. Abu spoke more low, but cheerly said, I prithee then, write me as one that loves his fellow men. The angel wrote and vanished. The next night it came again with a great wakening light and showed the names whom love of God had blessed. And lo, Ben Adam's name led all the rest. Good. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, to restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go glorifying the Lord by our life. Alleluia, alleluia. Music for this version is supplied by Cosmo, as you can see. Thank you for all, and a special thanks to those supporting our charitable outreach here at Redemptor's Publications. That's very kind of you to share this, but not this. We don't play with those. Thank you, Cosmo.